Good evening. Welcome to QUT Web News. Good evening. A second man has faced charges relating to planting a golf ball bomb which blew off an Ipswich teenager's fingers in May. 37-year-old Mark Teer was released on bail after a brief appearance in Ipswich Magistrates Court this morning. After the teenager was injured by the makeshift bomb, police searched the property where Teer and another man lived. Bomb squad officers carried out 18 controlled explosions to clear the West Ipswich property. Tia is facing charges of grievous bodily harm, manufacturing explosives without authority and two counts of unlawfully depositing explosives. In applying for bail, barrister Steve Kissick said his client, injured in another explosion, requires ongoing medical attention and needs to run a concreting business. Prosecutor Senior Sergeant Kevin Cormont opposed bail on the grounds that Tia has a very good motive to interfere with witnesses. Hearing both detailed submissions, Magistrate Andy Cridland considered Tia to be low risk and unlikely to commit another offence or put the safety of the public at risk. On that basis, the Magistrate granted bail. The other man charged with planting the bomb and manufacturing explosives, Glenn Dell, shared the rented home with Tia. He remains in custody. Mark Tia made no comment in court and was free to leave, set to reappear at the end of the month. Elizabeth Lyons, QUT News. There was a tall spectacle on Sydney Harbour this morning. Big crowds on shore and on the water ignored the rainy, windy conditions to see the largest collection of tall ships in Sydney since the 1988 bicentenary. They're here to kick off Australia's International Fleet Review. They've sailed from all over the world to take part. Tall ships from the Netherlands, Canada, the UK, Australia and New Zealand made their grand entrance into an overcast Sydney harbour. Led by the Endeavour and Young Endeavour, the ships sailed through the harbour to Cockle Bay in 20 to 30 knot winds. Many of these beauties have long histories. One was built in 1874. Another worked as a minesweeper during World War II. The Lord Nelson is unique. It can be crewed by people with disabilities and in wheelchairs. Going up aloft last yesterday, being hoisted up in my wheelchair, it was absolutely fantastic. Everybody takes turns steering when we set sails, the whole watch joins in together. The last time this many tall ships came together was 1988 for Australia's bicentenary. This time, they're here to celebrate the centenary of the Navy's first entry into Sydney. This is something very significant in the history of Australia. On Saturday, the Governor-General will be joined by the Guest of Honour, Prince Harry, on board HMAS Lewin for the official fleet review. The event is expected to inject around $50 million into the New South Wales economy. Daniel Winters, QUT News. Ten of Brisbane's hotels have already put up the no vacancy sign more than a year out from the 2014 G20 summit. So far, bookings for the global event are worth more than $23 million. In November next year, Tony Abbott will host leaders from more than 19 countries at the Convention Centre and there's bound to be heavy security around the high-profile leaders, like Barack Obama and David Cameron. Some locals aren't happy. Who are these pretenders sitting back behind their security forces, locking down cities? Look at the chaos it causes to every city that they go to. And there'll be a flow-on effect to the availability of other services. Flight Centre says the period will be busy and people should think twice before visiting Brisbane, or at least book now. Owner of the Kookaburra River Queens, Captain Jim Kelly, is looking forward to the G20. It'll be a great economic boost for Brisbane. Um, it will be, uh, we're keen to show them uh, where the floods were and how we've recovered from the floods and what a wonderful city we've got based on our river. He's looking forward to hosting some big names. We might even get some sole use charters for Obama or the... Um, Mr Putin from uh, Russia or somewhere. High-profile leaders increase the possibility of a terror threat. To counter this, around 5,000 police officers will be on patrol during the summit. Despite the possibility of terror threats, Brisbane is already looking forward to the G20 summit, which should boost the local economy. Eliza Jane Mann, QUT News. A boom in foreign students has created Brisbane's biggest export market. The visiting internationals are soaking up our sunny weather and having a positive impact on the local economy. 
Forget the US and the UK, international students are turning to Australia, and especially Brisbane, as a popular destination to continue their degrees. Brisbane, like when compared to Melbourne and Sydney, is a new place, which is a multicultural city, which is growing up. So I wanted to explore the new opportunities, and that was one factor which I thought, okay, let's go. Nearly 29,000 international students are currently enrolled in Queensland universities. The boom in foreign students is helping Brisbane's economy, with the education and training sector worth $5.1 billion. With thousands of local jobs generated through international education, it's now Brisbane's biggest export market. They also bring a, a whole raft of uh, visiting friends and relatives with them. About 68% of international students will have a visiting friend or relative while they're here studying. Um, that in, that um, has a huge tourism component for the city and the state. Queensland's sunny weather is a major factor for students choosing to come here. And with Brisbane being one of the most affordable destinations for international students, it's easy to see why it's so appealing. Universities are also benefiting, not just from a cultural perspective, but financially as well. Last year, um, some $130 million was contributed in international student fee revenue, which is uh, somewhere between 12 and 15 per cent of the university's recurrent income. Mr Edmondson says the contribution that international students make to the university's cultural diversity is just as important as the financial benefits. Luke Rutledge, QUT News. A small taste today of next week's annual Oktoberfest, but this is a month of mixed messages as the National October campaign also is underway. An extreme sports athlete is taking a big leap of faith for charity and to break a Guinness World Record. Jay Phoenix is aiming to make 106 bungee jumps in 24 hours and in the process raise money for the Brave Hearts Foundation. Three, two, one, bungee! He started his high-flying feat at 6.30 this morning by leaping off the 40-metre platform at Kingston Park Raceway. For most people, this is a one-off adrenaline hit, but Jay is using gravity to achieve his dream. I suppose why not? <laughs> um, but yeah, I've always wanted to set a record. Um, I enjoy this kind of thing, so it's, it's sort of the perfect fit for me. But he won't be satisfied by just passing the record. He wants to smash it. I'll be happy with nothing less than 150. And no amount of pain or the possibility of rain will stop him. Um, I'm feeling good. Yeah, the ankles are starting to, to hurt a little bit. Um, so that'll be the struggle. And uh, the neck and shoulders get a bit tight as well. But despite Jay's enthusiasm, the bungee crew understands how draining a feat like this can be. So they make sure he's given a lot of food and water, as well as encouragement. Every jump, just getting in there, just one more, just one more, just keep going. Um, we're not trying to think of how long we have to go. And five hours in, he's already bettered his personal best. We've passed the amount of jumps we've done in practice, um, but he's still feeling just as good as the first. And if 24 hours of bungee jumping isn't enough, this extreme sports daredevil has more plans to attempt more world records in the future. Jay hopes to crack the world record before midnight and then keep jumping. Anya Simonson, QUT News. The Manly Sea Eagles and Sydney Roosters came face to face at today's official NRL Grand Final lunch. Although the coaches didn't reveal too much of their game plans, the hype surrounding Sunday's blockbuster continues to build. Suited up and far away from the training fields, the boys of the grand final sat down for a presentation feast. Jessica Mowboy opened the afternoon, but the boys were a bit too eager to get stuck into their food. Sonny Bill Williams has been a very big part of what's happened for the Roosters in 2013. Is he choking on his chicken as well? He's polished it off already. Can we have another chicken for Sonny Bill? This weekend's matchup is expected to be a cracker, and in their third grand final in six years, Manly coach Jeff Tuvey thinks it'll be close. We did what we had to do, and um, I think uh, we're ready for this game. Tuvey, who's always prepared to wear his heart on his sleeve, also said that he won't be staying calm because that would be boring. I, I like the drama. I like the, the players to have some character, and I like the people around there to have some character. Touted by his players as the next Wayne Bennett, Rookie Roosters coach Trent Robinson is just focusing on the fitness of his team. I mean, the guys weren't fit enough to play last weekend. Uh, and if we played uh, early in the week, they probably wouldn't have been ready either. So it'll see over the next couple of days whether they're ready to play or not. The Roosters are favourites, but based on previous matchups between the two teams this season, expect a close game. Don Beattie, QUT News. Time now for a look at the weather. Temperatures in the southeast today and strong winds for most of the coastline. Brisbane, Ipswich and the Sunshine Coast all hit tops of 32, all sun. 
The Gold Coast not too far behind on 31. Around the nation tomorrow and mostly sunny across the country. Melbourne and Perth both expecting tops of 22. Canberra can expect a chilly morning of minus one with some early frost. Sydney and Adelaide sunny tops of 21 and 25. The forecast for Queensland and a chance of storms along the coastline. Mackay and Townsville expecting some heavy rain with brief showers for Cairns and Mackay, tops of 30. Sunny and warm for Mount Isa and Longreach, reaching tops of 32 and 34. The outlook for Brisbane, and it's going to be all sun for the next three days. Friday reaching 24. The weekend heating up 27 for Saturday and 30 for Sunday. That brings you up to date with the weather. And that's all the news we have for now. We're back tomorrow with more QUT web news. Goodbye. Goodbye.